happy Friday. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Friday Finance. Hey. Hey. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to Friday Finance. It's another episode, unfortunately. I wasn't here last week, okay? I was observing, of course, Good Friday. So I decided, you know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and leave everybody alone and not bother everybody with Friday Finance. Hello, everybody. Say hello when you come in. Drop something in the chat. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to Friday Finance. I am here live with you on Friday Finance, guys. I love spending this time with you. Love it, love it, love it. Welcome Facebook, welcome Instagram, welcome guys. I am so glad you are here with me. Oh my goodness. So today I've got something very, very special for you. So guys, listen, um, I'm getting ready to celebrate the one year anniversary of Friday Finance. Can you believe it's almost a year on May 7th? It's a Friday, of course. I am going to be celebrating the one-year anniversary of Friday Finance, guys. So make sure you're here to celebrate with me the one-year anniversary, guys. I'm telling you, it's going to be massive. I'm going to be giving away lots and lots of prizes. Yes, I am. Okay, it's going to be epic. Now, um... The other thing I wanted to say is this, guys. Apparently, April is Financial Literacy Awareness Month. And I'm thinking myself, wait a minute. Financial literacy shouldn't be dedicated to just one month. It should be all year long. We need to discuss financial literacy all year long, guys. And so as we go on this mission, on this journey, guys, to spread financial literacy. Let's talk about it all the time, not just during the month of April, okay? So anyways, guys, as I was preparing this week for Friday Finance, I found myself discussing the Roth IRA over and over again with individuals. And um, it was like, I don't know, maybe the universe was trying to tell me something. So I felt the need to have another conversation around the Roth IRA, because it seems to me many individuals don't understand the Roth IRA. So guys, tonight I want to take some time to revisit the Roth IRA. Remember, I love questions. Say hello on Facebook. Okay, I see you guys there. Say hello. Drop something in the chat so I know who's there. Okay, um, so anyways, guys, I uh, wanted to take some time out to have this conversation about the Roth IRA because so many people are a little confused about the Roth IRA. Now, the Roth IRA is one of the easiest ways to invest in the market and save for retirement, guys. Seriously, it is one of the easiest ways to go ahead and invest in the market and save towards retirement. Now, the limit to invest in a Roth IRA, guys, is $6,000 for individuals under age 50, and individuals over age 50, the limit goes up to 70, I mean $7,000. So I wanted to look at five benefits with you of having this Roth IRA. Now remember, IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. So, hey Jada, welcome. Thanks for watching. Um, so. IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account, guys. So a Roth IRA, by the way, Roth, uh, they're using that because it's named after the person who invented this type of IRA, okay? So guys, here are five reasons, okay, why it's beneficial to have a Roth IRA. Number one, you only invest after-tax dollars, okay, in the Roth IRA. So you will never have to pay taxes on the money invested in the Roth. Whatever money you invest within the Roth, okay guys, listen, you do not have to pay taxes on that money because you've already paid taxes on it. Um, it's after tax money. Um, here's the other thing guys, once the money gets into the account, you actually have to go in there, in the account, 
and invest the money. Don't just let it sit there. You have to go in there and invest it. Number two, guys, you can continue investing in a Roth IRA even after age 70. At age 70, if you have a regular IRA, they ask you to start taking distribution. It's called an RMD, Required Minimum Distribution. Here, let me type this in here um, for you, Facebook. Required RMD. Let me see if I could type it in here for you guys. RMD, okay? And it stands for Required uh, Minimum Distribution. Minimum, I'm abbreviating here, guys. Distribution, okay? So here, uh, at 70, you, on a regular retirement account, 43B, 401K, 457, you have to start withdrawing money at 70. But a Roth IRA, because you've already paid taxes on it, you don't have to. You can continue investing in it. Guys, remember, the Roth IRA is money that you're earning, that you're investing. So you have to have earned income. As long as you have earned income, you can continue investing after age 70 into a Roth IRA. I know, isn't that fabulous? I'm telling you, the Roth is awesome, guys. Now, number three, they are very easy to set up. It's very easy to set up a Roth IRA. You can set up a Roth IRA with a robo-investor, um, on the apps, the robo investing apps such as um, Betterment, you've got Stash, you've got Wealthfront, you've got Acorns, you've got M1 Finance. What is so great about those apps? Well, you just put the money in there, guys, set it up automatically, and then the robo advisors ask you a few questions, and then they choose the funds for you based on how you answer the questions, and the money is automatically invested for you into your Roth IRA, okay, guys? So once again, when we talk about a Roth IRA on the robo apps, it's automatically invested for you. Or you can go ahead and set up a Roth IRA with one of the legacy platforms, the large platforms like Fidelity, TD, Vanguard, Vanguard, the father of indexing, okay? They're all about investing in indexes. Now, guys, listen, with those larger platforms, if you get lost, you're trying to set up your account, you don't know what to do, all you have to do is pick up the phone, call somebody and say, I need help. Mm -mm, I can't do this. I need help. I need somebody to coach me through it. So what are you talking about? TD, Fidelity, Vanguard, there will be somebody on the other line. E-Trade is another one where you can call them and say, I need help with this. And they will help you set up your Roth IRA. And guys, what you do is you connect the Roth IRA, okay, to your account. And you automatically transfer money into the Roth IRA every single month or every time you get paid. And then once the money gets into your account, you can set it up to automatically invest for you. Or you could choose to invest by yourself into the account. Now, here's another great part about this Roth IRA, guys. Number four, if you have a child that has income, um, yes, Prime America, yeah, mm-hmm, that's another company, absolutely. Now, if you have, oh, hey, Miss Kathy, um, guys, say hello when you come in, say hello. Um, now, Number four, guys, if you have kids that's earning on income, they're, hi, happy Friday. If you have kids that's earning on income, you can set up a Roth IRA for them and invest in the stock market within the Roth IRA. I cannot say this enough to people with kids that have jobs that are making money. Listen, if you have a child under age 18 that has a job that's making money, Take some of that money, guys. Open up a Roth IRA for your child so they can get started on creating wealth for themselves. You know why it's so critical to do it for your child? Because they have a whole bunch of time in front of them, guys. That time value of money makes sense for kids to start investing when they're really, really young, okay? Now, if you have your child, of course, that doesn't have a job, you can just do a regular brokerage account for them. Now, that was number four, guys. You can open up a Roth IRA for your child as long as they have earned income. Number five, guys, listen to this one. You can invest in the market within the Roth IRA, which means you can go inside your Roth IRA once you get your money, you can go ahead and purchase 
individual stocks like Apple, Pinterest, Roku. There's a whole bunch of them, okay? Um, you can buy the index funds like the S&P 500 SPY or you can buy the Vanguard S&P 500 VOO, okay? The index funds, the um, ETFs, they're the same thing. The REITs like Simon Property, Starwood Resort. Guys, let me tell you, you can buy all of these within the Roth IRA. The mutual funds, that's another one you can purchase within the Roth IRA. So essentially, guys, once the money gets into your Roth IRA, you have to invest the money in the Roth IRA, within the Roth IRA, or you could let the robo-advisors do it for you. Now, one of the ways to do it with the larger platforms is through the mutual funds, guys. So if you want to do this automatically, all you have to do, listen to this, all you have to do, set up the account so that it takes money out of your bank account, transfer it into the Roth IRA, and then once it gets into the Roth IRA, you set it up within the Roth IRA, guys, to automatically invest the money in the mutual funds for you. That's the only way it's going to work, okay? The only way it's going to work automatically, guys, for you to take that money and invest it in some mutual funds. And then, guys, listen. If you have all these stocks in here, in your Roth IRA, you sell them at a profit, okay? You're earning dividends. All those things are tax-free. If you take the profit and you reinvest it within the Roth IRA, you do not, do not, I repeat, have to pay taxes on that money. Now, why is that important? If you have a regular brokerage account, let's say you have a brokerage account with E-Trade, TD, Fidelity, or something like that, regular brokerage account, you're buying stocks in it, every time you sell a stock and you make profit, you're going to have to pay taxes on the profit. But guys, if you do it within the Roth IRA, you do not have to pay taxes on the profit. You don't even have to report it on your tax return. Okay? So guys, I'm telling you, this Roth IRA is so powerful. So I know some of you are wondering, well, what's the drawback? If it's so powerful, what's the drawback to having a Roth IRA? Listen, number one, you can only invest up to $6,000 a year if you're under age 50. And you can only invest up to $7,000 if you're over age 50. And then the money must stay in the account within um, for at least five years. If it doesn't stay in the account for at least five years, you take some of that money, guys, out, they might penalize some of that money. After five years, whatever money you put in that account, if you need to take some of it out, you can remove the original amount of money you put into the account tax-free, no penalties whatsoever. Remember, guys, it's a retirement account. We're not allowed to touch our retirement accounts until what magic age? 59 and a half. 59 and a half is the magic age where you can start touching your retirement accounts, guys. Okay? If it's pre-tax, you're going to have to start paying taxes on that money. And if it is after tax, like the Roth IRA, you don't have to pay any taxes on the growth, on the dividend, anything. No taxes in the Roth IRA, guys. Okay? So, guys, let me tell you, it's awesome. Those REITs, Miss Kathy, let me tell you. Oh, my God. Uh, my Simon Property Group REIT that I invested in last year during the pandemic, that REIT went down into the 50s, guys. It's doubled ever since then, okay? I was buying it in the low 60s. So now it's a hundred, I, I saw it the other day at $119 a share, okay? So that REIT, it's paying me $5.20 per year in dividends, okay? $5.20 per year. So every three months, guys, it is depositing dividends into my account for me. So I'm collecting my dividend, guys. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have 100 shares of Starwood Property. I don't have 100 shares, not Starwood Property, um, Simon Property. By the way, Simon Property owns the malls, okay, the big malls, the Galleria Mall. What's another big mall around here in Florida, okay? Uh, the Florida Mall in Orlando, okay? That one owns mall properties guys malls are not going anywhere actually people want to get back out there and get to the malls so actually the price of the stock is going up okay 
So guys, listen, if you have a hundred shares, okay, of Simon Property Group, okay, and they're paying $5.20 per share per year, okay, take that 100 multiplied by $5, that's over $500 for only a hundred shares of that one company, okay, and then my other favorite is Starwood Property Trust. STWD. Okay, by the way, let me put the disclaimer in here. I'm not telling anybody to go and invest in these, okay? I'm just talking, okay? Starwood Property Group, guys, pays just under $2 a share. And Starwood Property Group, you know how much it is a share right now? It's it's not even $20. Is it $20? I think it's like $22 a share, okay? So for $22 a share, every year I'm getting paid $2 dollars guys on each share so if i own a hundred shares yes miss kathy if i own a hundred shares of starwood property stwd okay every year i'm gonna collect two hundred dollars in dividends okay by the way guys dividends is money that you just collect for just owning the stock it's just interest okay so essentially you're getting paid while you sleep your money is working for you and that's what we want we want our money to work for us so imagine if i have 100 shares of simon property 100 shares of um stwd okay right there guys that's over 700 dollars in dividend i'm making per year all right guys listen the goal is to figure out a way to get your money to work for you so you don't have to work hard for that money, guys. You work smart, not hard. Because, people, listen, leaving that money sitting in my bank account somewhere, unless, of course, it's my emergency money, okay? My emergency money stays in the bank, okay? But the rest of the money, guys, listen, I'm going to invest that money. Even if I don't want to get too aggressive in the market, I am going to invest that money in some dividend paying stocks, okay? All right? We'll talk, Miss Jada. We'll have, we'll have a conversation, Miss Jada. All right? So guys, dividend stocks, fabulous. Because let me tell you, they barely move. They barely fluctuate, okay? So, one of the other ones that I started looking at was Main Street Capital, and for Main Street Capital, I'm starting to put a little bit of money in there. And Main Street Capital, guys, um, they're like 30 some odd dollars a share. And I believe they pay about $2.40 per share. That's another one. Um, let me see. There's another one I'm also looking at, guys. And, oh, you guys are my favorite. AT&T is my favorite. AT&T pays a whopping $2.08 per share. And that's a $30 stock. So, guys, once again, if I have 100 shares of AT&T, and uh, I'm holding to that 100 shares, guys, at $2.08. That's another, guys, <laughs> $200, okay, just for holding on to the stock per year, guys. Okay, just holding on to it. And, guys, the stock barely moves. The price of the stock barely moves. Unlike Simon Property, it's actually moving, guys. So you got to get your money to work for you. Warren Buffett says, you know, you have to find a way to get your money to work for you. Because if you don't, you're going to be working until you're dead. Okay? So, guys, get our coins to work for us. Collect those coins. Yes, stop leaving those coins sitting in a bank account. You know, every once in a while, I see people with large sum of money, guys, just sitting in the bank. Okay? Sitting in the bank. And, guys, let me tell you something. That money is barely earning 0.2%. Most bank accounts now, they're going to pay you 0.01%. Okay. So anyways, guys, see, you guys got me talking about <laughs> REITs. I love REITs, guys. You know why I love REITs so much? Because most of their profit, okay, whatever they make per share, most of it goes back to the investors. That's why I love investing in REITs, guys. I love the REITs, okay? By the way, that's another way of investing in real estate without owning any property real estate investment trust that's what a REIT stands for r-e-i-t real estate investment trust so you're investing in real estate without owning any property being eaten up by inflation yes what 
Listen, that's all they keep talking about these days. The inflation rate. The inflation rate is going up. The inflation rate. And guys, leaving your money in the bank at 0.01%. Okay, let's say you leave that money in ten, uh, for 10 years sitting in a bank account at 0.01%. In 10 years, that money will not be able to buy the same amount you would have purchased years ago, 10 years ago, guys. Basically, you're losing money, guys, by leaving your money sitting in a bank account. Unless it's for emergency pay purchases. Uh-uh, I'm not leaving my money sitting in a bank account like that, guys. Uh, I need some reads. <laughs> Listen, we'll talk, lady. We'll talk, okay? Um, you know, I can't be, um, I cannot give any advice, guys. I can only talk to you about this stuff and explain it to you. I cannot. I'm not licensed to give advice on anything, okay? So I'm just talking to you, all right? But we can talk, Miss Kathy. So, guys, listen, um, the other one is the banks, okay? The banks, they pay a nice dividend too, guys. Uh, one of my favorite banks is um, Ally. Ally pays a dividend. Bank of America pays a dividend, okay? Wells Fargo pays a dividend, although last year they cut back on their dividends. I love dividend-paying stocks, guys, because what I'm doing is protecting my money. Sometimes I just don't want to put my money in gross stocks, so what I do is I hold on to my money in the REITs rather than leaving it sitting in a CD or a savings account, guys. Even the CDs, guys, the rate of return on those, they're horrible, horrible, okay? So guys, listen, I need to get to the stock market. Let's have a little conversation about the stock market, guys. So uh, number one thing I need to mention is that a lot of people are talking about cryptocurrencies, okay? Everyone's talking about these crypto digital currencies. And that's all the conversation I hear about. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin. By the way, guys, there's a lot of different cryptocurrencies. We have the micro currencies that are really, really small. They're worth less than a penny, but people are buying them and making money. They're buying large amounts of them and trading them. They're buying them and then reselling them once they go up. Uh-huh. You need that too. So essentially, if you're thinking about investing in crypto, guys, personally, what I would do is I would go with the leaders in the industry. What are the leaders in the industry? Bitcoin, Ethereum. Those are the leaders. So I would go with the leaders just to be on the safe side. But guys, there's so many other ones out there. Because the little ones, what's going to happen eventually, guys, they're going to fizzle out. They, they will get bought out. Or perhaps they just won't survive. So if you want to place your money in some of these digital cryptocurrencies, you want to go ahead and think about the leader in the industry. The other term maybe some of you have been hearing about is NFT. NFT, okay? Which is about digital art. Putting a signature on digital art and then being able to trade it online. So you guys can look into that. Number two, guys, Coinbase, talking about cryptocurrencies, Coinbase, okay, which is a platform similar to Robinhood, they trade, they trade cryptocurrencies or digital currencies. It's going public this coming Wednesday, April 14th, guys. It's a very expensive company. Right now, it's worth close to $100 billion. And they're expecting the shares to sell at about $350 per share, guys. Okay, that's a lot of money. Huh? That's going on Wednesday. It's going to have its IPO on Wednesday, April 14th. Additionally, guys, because people are getting ready to go out, you know, they're taking their shots. They got their shots. I got my first shot two weeks ago. My second shot is going to happen next Friday, actually. Okay, okay. And uh, so a lot of people are feeling more comfortable and they're going out. And so Facebook and Google, they've been on fire this week, guys, because of the ad dollars. They're getting more ads. So because of the ad dollars, Facebook and Google, they're on fire with those advertising dollars, guys. So I don't know if you have some shares of Facebook, just hang on or Google, hang on. Okay. And then guys, number four, GM unveiled an electric Hummer. Yeah, an electric Hummer, people, okay? So essentially, GM is full on the business of electric vehicle, starting off with their electric Hummer, okay? 
Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the commercials. I saw the commercials. It looks very interesting. Personally, I never liked the Hummers. I'm not, but guys, if you got GM, GM, the stock, hold on to it. Don't sell it. Hold on to it, okay? Because they're really big on this electric vehicle thing. Someone just just whispered something to me this afternoon. I'm like, really? Oh, okay. I got to go do some research, all right? So number five, guys, last but not least, Las Vegas. Las Vegas is popping. People are going out to Vegas because, you know, there's a lot of gambling that's happening in Vegas. And so they're reopening all these places on um, in Vegas on the Strip. And so the Vegas stocks, like the Wynn, Wynn, W-Y-N-N Resort, MGM, Caesars, all these companies did really well this week, guys, because Vegas is reopening up and people are actually flying and vacationing in uh, Vegas and, of course, doing their gambling and so forth and so on, guys, okay? So those are some of the things that have been happening in the stock market, guys. You guys aren't even asking any questions. You know I love questions, okay? Say hello when you guys come on too. Guys, listen, the stock market is not meant for everybody. It's very risky, but I wanted to come and have this conversation about the Roth IRA because I think a lot of people don't know how great a Roth IRA is and how much advantage you can take, you can get from having a Roth IRA, guys, okay? By the way, there is an income limit. If your income exceeds, if you're a single person, it exceeds, I think, $125,000, you cannot invest in a Roth. But most of my people, okay, how do you decide what you're investing in? In terms of what? My Roth IRA, uh, my brokerage account, um, stocks, you know, there's different things. Hey, Miss Debbie, how are you? Welcome, lady, welcome. Tell me, what are we talking about, lady? Okay, particular investment and how often do you invest in a particular investment? Okay, so I have my favorites. Like right now, let me tell you, uh, I've been investing a lot into the um, uh, fuel sources. I told you guys about the fuel stocks, okay? Because they're going to need alternative power because of all these electronic EV vehicles, okay? So as a result, I've been looking at a lot of these charging companies. What are some of the charging companies? I told you guys some of them about like three weeks ago, maybe. Like uh, Romeo Power is one of them. Charge Point is another one of them. Uh, Blank Charging is another one of them. And uh, there's another one I was looking at. Um, I do have shares in it. Shoot, I forgot the name of it. So that's what I've been investing in right now. So I'm looking and doing my research. And based on my research, I decide, you know what? This is a really good field to go ahead and invest some money in, okay? So those are my stocks. And then the stuff that I invest in, in my uh, Roth IRA, okay? I'm going to tell you guys, number one thing I invest in in the Roth IRA, the index funds, okay? The ETFs, like SPY. I have some SPY in my Roth IRA, Okay? Because it's just sitting there for the long term and riding the market. Uh, I do buy individual stocks within my Roth IRA, like my AT&T, my STWD. I love those because of the uh, rate of return on the um, interest and dividend. I love investing in those too. So it just depends on what I'm investing inside of. If it's a Roth, if it's, if it's my brokerage account. I also invest for my niece and nephew. So for my niece and nephew, I might look at companies like Snapchat or Twitter or um, what's another good one? Abercrombie and Fish. So depending on where I'm investing, that determines what I invest in, okay? But the bottom line is I like to invest in great companies that I see potential in. And if I'm not sure what to invest in, I take my money and I put it into the SPY. Yeah, put it into the SPY, guys. Listen, the SPY doesn't move as much as some of these growth companies because they're individual stocks. But guys, let me tell you, the SPY has been booming lately. It hit over $400 a share. Last year at this time, I remember the S&P 500 was around $320 a share. And guys, I just looked at it today. It's 
$409 a share. So if you bought some shares of the SPY guys just last year, you would have made some money, okay? So if you wanna be on the safe side, you don't wanna take too much risk, index funds, ETFs, best way to go. Now, personally, I like to take some risks because I have some time in front of me before I choose to transition from work. Notice I didn't say retire. I don't like the word retire. I'm allergic to the word retire, okay? So uh, I have some time in front of me. So I like to go ahead and take some risks with my money, okay? So it just depends on what I am going to invest in, which, which account I'm going to invest in. And based on that, I make my decision. But Miss Kathy, okay, if you want to talk a little bit more, you got my number, you got my number, we can chat, okay? By the way, guys, while I'm on this, let me just say this, okay? I talked about the Roth IRA and I talked about it before, but I forgot to mention this. So let me say it now, okay? I've said this before, but let me say it again. I'm going to reiterate. Guys, listen, you can contact me, okay? When you contact me, I respond, okay? Whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, um, direct message on my phone, whatever. If you want to start, let's say a Roth IRA and you have no clue how to do it, you have no clue how to invest, within the Roth IRA, all you have to do guys is go ahead and message me and I will get back to you and we'll come up with a plan for me to help you out with your investment needs, okay? Guys, I'm here to educate you about this. So if you need some kind of guidance, you need me to sit down and explain stuff to you before you do what you need to do, I don't have a problem with that people. I love teaching, I love educating people. That's why I'm here. So if you get stuck on something and you have no clue what to do, pick up the phone, call me, send me a message. I'll be more than happy to answer your question. And if I don't have the answer, I'll do the research and get back to you. Seriously, I will. So guys, don't be hesitant about asking questions. And one of the things I tell my students all the time, okay, and some of you have been my students, is that when you're in the classroom, okay, with me, ask me questions. I'm here to answer your questions. I love questions. When I have a class that doesn't ask too many questions, it's either one of two things. Number one, they know everything, okay, and they don't know, they don't need to ask any questions, or they just don't know what questions to ask. Guys, all it takes is one question. You just start with that one question, and then it snowballs into other questions. I had no idea there were limits in the Roth. That's why I'm saying, Miss Kathy, a lot of people don't understand these things. And that's why I like to take my time and break it down and explain it so that many of you, many more of you can understand what's going on with these accounts. Because guys, if you don't understand what the thing is, how are you going to invest in it? If you don't understand, okay? You have to have some kind of knowledge about these things in order for you to invest in them. You have to feel comfortable. Um, should I save to buy one? I want uh, or buy something else. Listen, um, I'm glad you brought that up because what I tell people is this, guys, okay? This year and last year, when I started doing Friday Finance, a lot of people thought, this is what a lot of people thought, guys, okay? And I'm starting to dispel that. A lot of people thought you had to have a lot of money to start investing, okay? You don't have to have a lot of money to start investing. And the beautiful thing about some of these platforms, why I talk about certain platforms in particular, is because of the way they set up these investment accounts now. For example, guys, Fidelity, that's my number one favorite right now, Fidelity. I cannot stop talking about Fidelity. Let me tell you why I love Fidelity so much. You buy whatever your money can afford, Miss Kathy. So if you want to buy the S&P 500 and you only have, okay, $200, but the shares are $409, you buy $200 within Fidelity, okay? I like Fidelity because it's got a history. It's a legacy platform. But guys, my second favorite is Cash App. And let me tell you why I love Cash App so much, okay? Although they need to start working heavily on the security issue, okay? I'm gonna tell you guys, I like to be honest and forthcoming with you guys, okay? 
Um, Cash App, guys, you use it. It's ubiquitous. Everybody uses Cash App. So since you're using it to go ahead and do transactions, send money to people, why not whatever dollars you have left over in Cash App, drop it in the stock market, guys. They changed the icon now on Cash App. It's a little dollar with the Bitcoin symbol. You will see it at the bottom of your cell phone. You click on that. And guys, in there, you can invest in the stock market. You can invest in Bitcoin, okay? And whatever your money can afford. So if you can afford $5, Miss Kathy, $10, $20, $30, just do it. And then, guys, the next thing is be consistent about it. Let me tell you something. My public account that's on Robinhood. By the way, I tried transferring my Robinhood account over to Fidelity. <clears throat> Robinhood wouldn't let my account go because I have some uh, cryptocurrencies in there and I have some partial shares in there. So guys, it's a whole mess. I still haven't transferred my account. But guys, listen to this, okay? So with those accounts, okay? I tell people this all the time. Every time I get paid, the day I get paid, okay? And by the way, you can make this automatic. I just go in there automatically. I transfer $50 into my Robinhood account. I do it every time I get paid, guys. So now it's become a habit because I've been doing it for so long. It doesn't bother me that I'm dropping $50. And by doing this, guys, it's a habit. That's number one. Number two, let me tell you, I'm paying myself first. And then I'm paying the bills. Did you hear that? I'm paying myself first and then I'm paying the bills. By the way, Robinhood is not the only place I transfer money into, okay, when I get paid. The other ones are all automatic. This one, I still do it by hand, okay? Every time I get paid, I go in there, drop that $50 in there. But the rest of them, guys, they're automatic. When I get that money deposited in my account, automatically, this goes to the retirement account. That goes here. That goes there. I reallocate the money. Basically, guys, let me tell you, when you do automatic investing like that, you've got little people working for you, okay? Those are just little people working for you. So... It's best to start, Miss Kathy. Don't wait. I don't care how much you have. Whether it's $50, $10, get started. And let me tell you something. My first account was a retirement account that I started when I became an educator, okay, years ago. You know how much I started contributing in that account? $50 a month, guys. $50 a month. Yeah. Yeah. I started with $50. So regardless of how much you have, the best thing you can do for yourself is to get started, guys. Because if you keep putting it off, what are you missing out on all those gains you could have gotten? Yes. So stop putting it off and just get started, guys. And if you don't know how to start, you need some help. You need some form of explanation. You need to be comfortable with this to understand what's happening. Just reach out to me, guys. Just talk to me, okay? Send me a message. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Are there limits on Acorn or Cash App? Um, there's no limits on Cash App because Cash App is a brokerage account. There's no limit. Acorns, there's no, um, yeah, if you set up um, a Roth IRA with an Acorn, yes, there will be a limit if you're under $56,000. If you're over age 50, $7,000. Thank you, lady. Thank you. Now, the other thing you guys need to do, please. Share this knowledge with other people. Guys, I am telling you, the more I talk to people about finances, the more I realize there's so much we need to learn, people. A lot of individuals don't know that much about their finances. And on top of that, what they do is they turn their money over to somebody else to manage. And then, guys, what happens? People take advantage of them. Yeah, okay? So, guys, listen. Last thing I need to say, and I'm off is um i don't normally do this but um this afternoon i just found out that dmx passed away so i wanted to just pay my respects to this great man because he was awesome okay y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here up in here okay so i wanted to pay some respect to the man himself dmx okay he was awesome guys so just so you know and on that, guys, we're going to end it right here. I will see you next Friday, everybody. Thank you so much for attending. We're going to end it up on some music, everybody. Bye. Hey. Miss Debbie, you have a question? Okay. I'll talk to you, Miss Debbie. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.
watching. Hey. Hey. Happy Friday. Bye, guys.